Hello and welcome to this video on Devil May Cry. Um, today I'll be talking about the, I think it's the fifth one, I'm actually not sure, um, five or six or something. I played the third one as well on the PS2. Uh, this is the newest one and I played it on the PC. So first things first, I will explain a bit about the, uh, the game and the combat. Because the combat is basically the, the best part of the game. It's officially an action platformer, but I'm really not uh, happy with the platforming. Uh, it might just be that the, the weapons and the fighting is so good, so it takes all the credit, but yeah, whatever. So the first weapon you start out with is uh, the sword. I think it's called the Rebellion, uh, something like that. Uh, and I'm painting on the wrong layer, as usual, whatever. So. The weapon you have, you start out with the sword, which is just, uh, you know, pressing the regular buttons. And then if you hold the left trigger, you will get to the um, uh, angel weapons. Um, I'm actually not sure what they're called. I think one is Osiris and the other one is something. So it's basically a scythe and these uh, sort of weird um, suddenly nothing happens, whatever. So, you have these weird sort of blades, the shurikens or whatever. Um, the scythe powers up as you use it, as you deal damage, um, so it eventually becomes really strong and the um, shuriken blades are, they have a bigger AOE and they can be used to pull enemies towards you. Um, so that's the angel weapons, and then you have the devil weapons, which are controlled if you hold the right trigger. Oh, it's just wrong there. So it's, yeah, it's this, it's an axe basically, and then you have these fist weapons, which you can power up. Um, if you hold the attack buttons, you will power up the weapons and you will be doing more damage. Um, so I don't really use the gloves much, but the axe is really good for single target damage and combined with the standard rebellion uh, you can create pretty cool combos which is actually the next step on my slides here boom combat and combos um, so what you start out with is the rebellion and basically what happens if if you mash the button you will actually get a, a combo which at the end of a combo you will always have some sort of specific blow which both gives you more style points, which I won't be talking much about, because it's basically just score, and I don't care much about that. So let's say you hit XXXXX. I'm, I'm drawing on the wrong layer. Of course I am. So if you just press the same button three or four times, you will get a certain combo, and then if you hit XX and you wait a while, and then you hit X again, you will get a different combo. Um, the cool thing about this is you can actually switch weapons uh, in the midst of a combo. So if you hit XX and then you switch weapon and then then you yeah, you hit Y or whatever. You just use another different weapon. Um, you will get to the uh, to that weapon's uh, sort of Y, Y, wait, wait, Y combo. So this means that if you want the um, the strong attack with the axe that stuns enemies you can hit two quick hits with a sword, which is faster, and then finish off with the uh, with the axe, just to use the stun attack. Um, and if you're using the angel weapons, you can actually um, attack cancel in the middle of any attack. Um, so if you're swinging your uh, shuriken blades, you can animation cancel at any time, and this means that it's easier to dodge. So if you want to, and if you're in a scary position, you can do two quick swipes with the um, with the angel blades, and then you can use the third strong attack with the axe, uh, which just allows for a bunch of different pretty cool combos. And you can do stuff like midair combos as well. They basically have the same layout. It's either mash a button or it's hit a couple of times, wait a while and then hit the button again. Um, stuff like that. But since all the different weapons have different combos, um, you can both do sort of ground attacks and air attacks. 
uh, comboing the weapons one after another. Um, so the next one is movement. Um, the angel weapons have a... Um, no wait, I'll start with the basics. You have your basic basic jump, you have a double jump, you have a dodge, which I think gives you a bunch of invis invincibility frames. Um, don't quote me on that, but I think it does. Um, and then you have your air air boost something. If you're holding down the uh, the angel uh, angel button, um, you will actually be able to do sort of a double jump and then the air boost, which uh, it just gives you a bunch of forward momentum basically. So it moves you from A to B quicker if you're trying to get to an enemy, um, stuff like that. And then you have your, your demon pull, uh, demon pull, which pulls enemies towards you. And then you have your angel pull, uh, uh, angel lift probably, which uh, moves you to the enemy instead. So the demon pull, if you're standing right here and the enemy is over here, you will be standing still, the enemy comes to you, and the angel lift is the other way around. Now you can't pull all enemies and you can't lift to all enemies, but uh, in general that's how it works. Um, and you can also combo these together, like you can double jump and pull enemies into the air, you can jump, air boost and then dodge, you can angel lift to an enemy and then pull his shield away and then knock him to the ground. Um, the combo system is also pretty cool because you have your ground attacks and you have your air attacks but you also have ground attacks that knocks enemies into the air so if you're standing here and the enemy is here you hit him with your awesome sword and he flies up into the air which allows you to either jump up and do air combos or it just allows you to attack something else because it, it, since the physics is basically non-existent. Well, it's not non-existent, but it's a game sort of physics. Uh, he will stay up in the air for a while and then fall down and then have to stand up again. Um, and then you have your... Uh, you also have your... if you're flying, let's say this is the ground, um, you can also hit your enemies and knock them into the ground if you want to con continue with, an, with the ground combo instead. Um, so, since you can both dodge on the ground which allows you to move around faster and you can jump and you can air boost and stuff like that. It makes the movement really, really quick and dynamic and the movement and the comboing is probably the best parts of the game. I love just playing around with enemies, juggling them and keeping fighting. Like the standard sort of enemies are pretty weak, but since they're vulnerable to all sorts of different interruptions the, they will basically never be allowed to attack um, so you can just juggle them however you want to um, oh yeah I actually had a slide that says levels which is basically this uh, fighting on the ground fighting in the air and switching between the two um, so the next part of the game is the enemies and in this video video no it's an image. Uh, so in this image I'm just fighting a bunch of these sort of crappy uh, low-level dudes and what you can see here is they're basically taking damage because I'm using the um, I'm using the shuriken blades you can't really see them here but at this point I have actually um, used the attack that pulls enemies towards me so this guy here whoops I'll draw with white instead so this guy this guy is it actually two? Probably two. This guy and this guy is going to be pulled towards me. So these standard sort of weak enemies are very susceptible to um, to AOE attacks because you can interrupt their attacks with just anything. So what you'll generally tend to do with these is use your AOE moves, use really powerful combos that sort of swing your sword around a lot or using the Skythe. You can also use another attack with the uh, shuriken, which basically knocks uh, groups of enemies together. So instead of coming to me, I would take all of these five and push them into a, 
uh, clump in the center here and then you could use something like the uh, powerful axe attacks that knock them into the air stuff like that so the weak enemies in Devil May Cry are basically cannon fodder and you will tend to not take a lot of damage unless you uh, do something stupid which is basically good design because you want enemies to make you feel powerful and then you also have strong enemies like these guys uh, you can actually see that they're strong just because of good character design uh, basically meaning they're fat and they have a lot of armor um, so instead of fighting these big guys uh, like the uh, the weak ones in the last picture you will actually have to split these guys up because they take so long to kill and their attacks aren't interrupted by yours which means that you will have to do a lot more dodging and stuff like that and if you remember from a really long while ago in my Diablo 3 uh, preview video um, I actually talked a lot about uh, sort of designing the game by having uh, a bunch of weak enemies with different attacks and then combining the enemies instead of having um, more complex uh, enemies that had several attacks and this is basically what Devil May Cry is doing uh, because uh, these big guys, they can charge, they can uh, do a sort of crushing move that tries to leap on top of you and then they can swing wildly around them uh, and that's it. The uh, beginning guys here, they can basically just thrust their sword at you. Um, I'm not sure if they have some sort of sweeping move but I don't think so. Um, so there are uh, weak enemies which are easy to kill, there are hard enemies which are difficult to kill and then when you combine the sort of different combinations you will get um, different encounters that make you prioritize targets and move around a bunch because you want to fight different uh, enemies and stuff like that so the enemy composition is actually really cool as well um, I'd actually recommend playing through it uh, at least once on one of the um, uh, the normal challenge uh, or difficulties. I think it's like it's one easy, it's medium, it's hard and uh, then if you finish hard you get um, Devil May Cry I don't remember what it's called I think it's that. And then you have Dante Must, must Die uh, at the bottom. So I think these three have um, they have the same uh, enemy encounters and then these two have a different version of enemy encounters so I'd recommend playing through the game um, at least twice um, just because the second time around the more challenging enemy encounters um, no wait maybe it's uh, this one and this one which has the same one I don't remember but they have different encounters anyway so uh, at this point in the game maybe instead of having three guys at the same time you'd only have two and you will get two uh, dream runners, I think they're called at a time as well, which are really obnoxious and parry your attacks and stuff like that. Um, so I'd actually recommend playing through it just to see the different sort of enemy um, enemy encounters. Um, that's it for the fighting part. I will get back to it because the fighting is so uh, central to everything else as well. Um, so the next part is the platforming. Um, and as you can see here, uh, this red part on the left, as usual, wrong layer, you know how it is. Um, let's see here, this one. So on the left part here, uh, something is red. This means that you can use your demon pull to pull it towards you. Um, the blue, uh, blue pillar thingy here is, um, it's for your angel lift. Yeah, let's call it that anyway which means that if you're standing here and you use this one it will pull you up here and then you will have to jump uh, to the next platform basically so I mean it's pretty basic platforming you have your double jump you have your uh, thrusty thing um, so you're basically just double jumping thrusting double jump uh, so we'll just keep doing that because it's the fastest way to get around using your air dash thingy um, so we'll basically constantly be spamming that to get from place to place as far as you can. 
or as fast as you can because fighting is the cool thing. Um, so the platforming, I shouldn't really be complaining about it. It's as good as expected. Some of the uh, angel lift parts are really obnoxious and you will have to do like the parts where you learn your skills and you get your new weapons. You will have to do them over even if you're playing it again on the same character on another difficulty setting. So if you're trying to get high ranks on the harder difficulties you will have to see cutscenes over and over again and you will have to do or watch uh, watch the sort of tutorials and get your weapons all over again. But I suppose that's just how it is. It's too hard something. Um, yeah. So the next step here is this is a boss. It's it's not the first boss, but it's um, my first example here anyway. So, as I said about the enemies, you can do all sorts of cool stuff with movement, about with hitting them around and uh, knocking them into the air and doing combos and stuff like that. Um, that basically gets thrown out the window as soon as you get to a boss. Um, the bosses are pretty bad in my opinion just because they're so heavily scripted and it seems like they're basically just to show off the pulls and the lifts and stuff like that. Um, now I'm just comparing this to Devil May Cry 3 which basically just made the enemies a sort of harder type of um, harder type of enemy and you fought the bosses in the same way that you fought regular enemies except you did a lot more dodging. Um, that's what I remember anyway. It's probably been seven or eight years since I played Devil May Cry 3. Uh, but in this case, as you can see, um, you're basically fighting the uh, the big slug thingy woman in the middle here. Um, and what happens is you run up to her. Wrong layer. What do you know? So you run up to her and you start hitting on her hands and then eventually she'll do an attack and after she's done the attack the hood thingy here will uh, fly off or pull back or something and you can hit her head and do more damage. And eventually she will vomit all over the platform and then you will have to move away. Um, it's not super obvious in the image here but what you have is you have a platform up here, you have a platform over here and then of course you have the platform you're standing on right now. So then you have these uh, angel lift uh, blue nodes. There are two on the left side as well and then there are three at the back here. So if she vomits on this platform you just uh, pull or lift or whatever to this one and then you fight her and then she vomits on that one and you keep moving. Um, so it's a pretty generic boss fight. It's not something you haven't seen before. So you just keep moving, you hit her hands, you hit her head, and you try not to get hit. Um, and then eventually, once you get one life bar down, you jump up here, and as you can see, up here, this is for pulling, so you knock a life bar down, you jump up to the one of the platform on the sides, you can actually see part of one up here. Um, so you jump up, you pull it, and then you get another life bar and then you do it again and you pull it and then eventually um, you basically knock her into the goo. Um, so again it's it seems that it's a lot about doing the pulling and lifting thingy. Um, my next example here is the the baby boss uh, and again what you're basically doing here is sure you can attack his hand uh, or his hands either one the left one or the right one um, I wouldn't recommend the right one because it has a really weird um, damage trigger. Like if you're just standing next to it while he's standing still, you will uh, occasionally take damage. Um, but yeah, what happens here is you can actually go around the side. Now I did, I took a pretty bad screenshot, but he he has like a hand covering up a weak point. Like his eyes are his weak points, so there's one up here, and then there's a hand covering this one. So you do the pulling of the uh, the hand and then the eye comes out and then you hit the eye and then eventually once you've done enough damage you pull out here and then you you do damage. So you see here it's two life bars 
one at the bottom here, which is at zero, which means that he's lying on the side here. And then you pull it out, and then you do damage to the top life bar. Boom. And again, like, you're not really fighting these guys normally. Um, like, you can't stun them in pretty much any point. They will eventually become stunned once you do enough damage, but yeah. You do some dodging. They have a really, uh, really obvious scripted attacks. Um, so, the bosses are pretty pretty boring in my opinion. Like, it's good for you to learn how to dodge properly, but not much else. And in the middle of all these boss fights there are also a ton of different sort of scripted cutscenes. Um, like the... I'll go back to this one. Like, when you do so much damage she falls down, it's a cutscene, and then when you pull it's a cutscene, and then she breaks the platform, it's a cutscene, and then you jump back and then you start fighting again. So, a ton of scripting, and in a game where the fighting is the central part, uh, scripting is pretty bad, in my opinion. And then we have um, some small general uh, nice things first. Like, this is the practice mode. You basically have an immortal uh, weak enemy here, which will never attack you, and you can do uh, filtering by weapon. Uh, which basically means you can see the combos and then at the bottom here you can also see uh, like different weapon combos so if you do two hits with the axe and then you do three hits with the sword you will get a different combo uh, and then I'm not sure about this but I think that if you do uh, if you do one of these combos the combo itself will light up in green or something like that um, at least it does if you're testing out new abilities. So this is a pretty cool place. You can just go here and learn new combos, uh, which you can actually also do uh, if I show you the uh, the upgrade screen here, which is my next point. Um, so if you go into the upgrade screen, uh, you can choose from a bunch of different ones here, and basically what you do is just you put one of your available upgrades into one of the squares, which will give you that uh, skill, basically. And it will also show you... First it will show you a small video clip of the uh, attack being executed. It will show you the hotkeys, and if you want to try it out, you actually can. Um, so, if, you're, if you want to test a new attack, you can just put a point into it, test it out, see if it uh, works for you and you want to keep it, or you can just take away the point and put it into something else, um, because the the game will never lock you into an upgrade. Uh, so, you can just move them around. As you get new weapons, you can move the points from your old weapons to your new ones if you want to. Um, so both the sort of practice mode and the upgrade practice mode here um, are really cool features in my opinion and it makes it really easy to know what skills to pick up and practice them in a controlled setting. Um, the next point is the uh, sort of dynamic environments, which is the coolest thing in my opinion, um, because I know how tedious it is to work with matinee now that I've done it for a few days. Um, so if you see here, um, they have you have your sort of standard interior and then in the next frame everything breaks up, it starts moving from left to right, um, the ground falls away, and all manner of weird things happen. Uh, like as you get further into the corridor here, more and more things will break until you actually reach the end here or you die, at which point you start over again. Um, oh yeah, that's another good point that I didn't mention. Like if you die, you will just respawn at the latest checkpoint with a bunch less health. Like, let's say this is one fall. Um, so you won't die instantly, you won't have to replay a bunch of things, uh, because the fights are pretty much never um, incorporating any sort of fall, so you won't have to start over. It's just platforming is separated from the action, and if you die while platforming it won't really affect you except you take, you take a bunch of damage. Uh, it's not that bad. I'd say you could probably fall 10 or 15 times before dying, so it's 
a pretty small amount of damage actually. But the dynamic environments is another cool thing which I wish more games would do because it's obviously possible and it's pretty cool. Um, the next thing here is they actually use the the loading screens to show off uh, combos both w with the same weapon as well as different weapons and this is just probably a rendered out alpha image so it's not like they're loading a bunch of different models to use in the cutscene um, it just shows you a bunch of cool tricks as well as a, a tip here at the bottom um, so it's a really good use of the loading screen in my opinion um, sure loading screens are um, different depending on how fast your computer is. I played this on my computer so I don't know how long the uh, loading screens will be on the PS3 or the Xbox but um, they're pretty fast on the computer anyway. I just think it's a really cool idea to use instead of just having the sort of now loading screen you're actually showing off the game and showing something that the player might not know or a combo they might not use. Um, yeah. You can also replay the secret missions if you want to practice something. I'd really recommend this uh, displaced skirmish one because it's super tricky, but it also teaches you a bunch about the game because you can only do damage within the active zones and the active zones are random and uh, they're also changing. So you have to move around a bunch, you have to pull enemies towards you and do damage and you will have to watch out for attacks and all manner of things. So the secret missions are pretty cool and you can replay them if you want to, you don't have to go into the actual level. So just go into the menu. Um, for the next part is my general annoyance um, annoyance part here, which is actually again about the secret missions. Because uh, number one, you won't be able to get them in a single playthrough. Um, there are keys which you have to pick up on later levels and then go back and redo the previous ones and I also think that there are uh, keys hidden behind doors which you can't open until you get uh, get the later weapons because you don't start with every weapon and there are doors which require certain weapons like uh, the shuriken ones are sort of a web thingy the axe ones are just scratched. Um, the glove ones are, they look sort of like crystal or something. Um, so you will have to play the game several times just to get all the keys and to unlock the uh, secret missions. So not only do you have to play through the game, but you will also have to do a lot of looking around. Um, now this is not such a big problem because I actually recommended you to play the game more than once before. Um, but I just think it's bad design. Like They don't want you to get to be able to finish it. Um, there are people who don't have... Um, I don't know, I probably put 30 hours into this game. There are people who don't want to play the game for that long. Um, and they should be able to play the completed game in one sitting. Uh, or not sitting, but in one playthrough, in my opinion at least. Um, it's an option, but I just thought I'd include it. Um, so the next one is the freeze frame. Basically, at uh, a bunch in the start of the game, obviously, the game just freezes up, it shows you one of these, and then you have to press a button to get rid of it. Um, if you really want the player to learn something, let them play through it. You have the super good um, sort of tutorial system, which I showed you before, uh, where you buy the skills and you can test your upgrades. Um, but you still have to do this really weird thing, like upgrade point received. If you want the player to know something like this, do it as soon as they go into a shop, for instance. Uh, because at this point, I'm actually in the middle of a fight. It's just that the the sort of upgrade thingy reached the point where you got the upgrade. And I really, really hate games that pause the game to learn or to teach you something. Um, if you want it, just make it um, pop up, like up here, show a hint, or do something like a separate tutorial mission, which, you're, uh, which you can choose to play or not. Um, 
If you want to check out more about this uh, sort of uh, tutorial system and learning by playing, you should definitely go watch the Sequelitis video on uh, Mega Man X, I think. I'll link it down below. Uh, but he goes through that stuff uh, in much more depth than I'll be able to do, and the video is pretty awesome. So go check that out. Uh, my next sort of weird uh, thingy about this game is this is in the middle of a hidden mission. And you're actually rewarded for finding or for completing the finished or the uh, secret missions. Uh, like, sure, it's a challenge, so it should be some reward. Uh, but since you're getting these, um, four of these form a health cross. So this is just one point, and then you have another one here, another one at the bottom, and another one here. So you're basically getting more health as you get further through the game, which is obviously good. Um, but you're also, uh, you won't be able to get to these in a single playthrough again. So if you're playing it for the first time on, on the hard setting, um, again, I don't remember, but let's say it's easy, normal, hard. Uh, so if you're playing it on the hard setting for the first time, you won't be able to access these at all. But if you're playing it for the first time on the easy setting, you will be able to pick all of the health cross up on the normal setting. And then once you get to the hard one, uh, let's assume that you're uh, playing the game, you will start the hard, hard version of the game with more health than someone who does it for the first time. And you'll also be so much better that the hard part, uh, the hard uh, skill might not be such a big challenge for you. Uh, which I think is a shame, because uh, I'd much rather see it like um, once you've unlocked them, you will get more health as you go along the difficulties. Uh, and then once you reach the fourth and fifth ones, you might be able to start with them at the start, because those are only unlocked once you finish the game. Um, it's just an opinion, but I think it's pretty weird design. Um, and in the last part here, I've actually only just uh, gone through the game and picked out a bunch of uh, cool screenshots, because the environment art and the sort of set design, if that's what you want to call it, are actually pretty awesome. Uh, the level design itself is not such a big influence on the game, because as I said before, the uh, the fighting is never actually done on any sort of arena that j doesn't have a flat ground, basically. Sure, in some cases there's a fountain in the middle, or there's a small hole in the middle, stuff like that. But the general level design isn't actually such a big influence on the game, so... Um, this is just environment art, but I, th I wanted to include it because I actually think the game is really cool looking. Um, I didn't get it in the screenshot here, but as everything breaks, there's also different materials being applied, like uh, cracks all over the place, and things are flying around, and the ground is moving. So there's a bunch of different dynamic th dynamic things happening. Uh, you also have your uh, nightclub level, uh, where you run around. As I said before, this is a basic fighting arena, it's just a square block. Uh, this one is actually a bit more interesting, because uh, blocks move around on the ground here, and if you don't use the specified weapon, like if it's red you need to hold a demon weapon, and if it's blue you need to hold an angel weapon, you will take a small amount of damage. Um, so this is actually one uh, level design part that I forgot to mention. Uh, but yeah, it's a basic arena, but I think it looks really cool. Uh, this is another part of the same map, so everything is blue, and you have these sort of weird funky walkways. And then again, same one, everything is orange again, and you have these different color blocks. Um, here you're running upside down on the way up to uh, the tower here. Um, the walkway is actually going up here. Uh, again, a really cool layout. Then you have your uh, way into the uh, this is one of the boss fights. It's also heavily scripted, but this is just really cool in my opinion. It really looks like a sort of news intro, and you just do some sort of basic platforming here. 
doodle doodle jump 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 and then you get to the end um, this is also a part of the the news uh, boss fight you're basically getting a news report where the, um, uh, what are they called a reporter yes uh, so there's a reporter speaking over this and this is just, uh, it's supposed to be a helicopter flying around filming you uh, but you're actually fighting as usual drawing on the wrong later so you're actually fighting you have full control while this is happening so you're running around killing these sort of really weak enemies and then you're getting a bunch of different cool quotes and stuff like that I really enjoyed this I think the art style is pretty amazing but as I said before the fighting is what makes this game and I'd probably play it even if I only had like an arena with waves of enemies coming towards me because the fighting is just so good uh, I'd really recommend you picking this up if you can rent it. Uh, you probably should because you can play it through in a week and then return it. But if you want it, there's a bunch of depth in the fighting system and I'd really recommend getting good enough to play on the harder difficulties because it's just so satisfying to uh, to play this game. The fighting is amazing, the platforming not so much, but I'd still recommend it. So if you've watched to the end of this, Thanks a bunch for watching. Uh, I hope you liked it. And the next one will be on Bioshock Infinite.